And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the SWBL podcast. We're back for a winter edition of the SWBL podcast. Your regular host, Brian Benware, has the night off, and he actually gave me the go-ahead to record and host this podcast, very special podcast for the SWBL. I'm going to be kind of recapping a little bit of season 21 with some perspective of two players that are well known in our Wiffle kind of family going on here in St. Louis. And my name is Sam Skibby, Commissioner of the SWBL, and my two guests today are two important members of Season 21. Can't tell the story of Season 21 without these two fellows with me. First up, we have, I think everyone's, you know, one of everyone's favorite players in the SWBL, and he's been a longtime member of the league. He has been a part of the league since 2008, been a part of every franchise era season as well, Mr. Paul Castellano. Paul, thanks for joining, which I believe, is this your first or second podcast that you've been a part of? It's my first time. Wow. First you, Sam. Awesome. Well, we are so happy to have you, Paul. I think it's been, everybody's been wanting to hear your voice on the airwaves of the SWBL <laughs> podcast. So um, we will talk a little bit more about Paul in just a little bit. And then also we have Mr. Chad Young. And Chad, is this your first or second? Uh, this is definitely my first. Definitely well, my first. then I <clears throat> picked the two right people to come on at the same time. Mr. Chad Young of the Rockies, who is only in his third year, just completed his third year with the SWBL, sort of the ace of the SWBL Rockies for uh, the past three years and the famed knuckleball kind of taking over as the best knuckleball in the league over Jimmy Nelson's the past couple of years. So high praise indeed. But Chad, thank you for joining you. us as well. Yes. And appreciate it. Obviously, we're going to get to why you two are kind of on this podcast in just a little bit in a little middle section. But let's first talk about your teams. The Rockies and the Athletics are two teams that I believe not one person in the whole league could ever say anything bad about. Everybody loves the Rockies. Everybody loves the athletics. There's no animosity between anybody on any teams. You guys have both franchises have done it the right way. Paul, I'll start with you with the athletics. Obviously, everybody continues to talk about that Cinderella story in 2016, <laughs> and you weren't even a part of it. You, um, <laughs> I was on the other end of it. Yes, you were. You. you were on the losing end of it with us in the Royals in 2016 in the semifinals, and the A's catapulted themselves in their first finals ever and then subsequently lost. But you know, Paul, since you've been on the athletics, you have and you had one stint of the Braves. Actually, it's been it's been so long, Paul. It's been three athletic years with you, Braves in the middle in the COVID year, and now three athletics years. So six years you've played with the athletics, seven years with Steve Hayes um, as your teammate. Talk about kind of the difference from the franchise there from Rays and the Royals, these high profile teams to going to the athletics. And you did join and you can be honest about it too. You joined the athletics after the Royals, because let's be honest, the Royals weren't fun. We're not a fun team. We weren't at the time. And you can be honest with the, with the listeners about that, but talk about kind of the switch over and what it's like be, being an A and continuing to try to shock the world uh, year after year. Yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> and it's it's been some rough years we, i mean you can talk you can talk about that too i mean it's not like your team doesn't know um what the the most they've won is five in 2021 yeah. it was five games went five and five so i mean trying to get over yeah. that hump into the above 500 range yeah the it's kind of one of those things it's like i could say the last two years we were really close and yeah. unless you like actually know, like see the numbers, you're going to be like, oh, he's just, you know, trying to make yeah. himself feel good. But we, I mean, like the last two years were like runs away here or there from being in, you know, and then yeah. once you're in, it's like anything, can anything happen. can happen. Um, so, I mean, it's, you know, yeah, it's, it's been fun to like be that close. Um, but at the same time, like the whole team, I think is, you know, feels that frustration of like, but we're not there. So you got to get yeah. there. You know, you got to, you got to be better than we've been. And, and we know that we know that every year and, and that, you know, so um, part of it's just like, we just got to make the jump, you know, and beat the Marlins. That really pisses me off. That really pisses me off. 
Well, I don't. I, and, to be honest with you, that's what I more than anything. I just want to beat the Marlins this year. I actually want to kill them. <laughs> so so the excitement level for the division draw for the athletics is you're sick of being with the astros and the orioles you want to be with the marlins next year and make sure you're with uh, them. Get them i twice. don't even care if i'm with, i just want to i want to play them and i want to i want to beat them badly well you guys ended your seat you ended your sunday i believe playing the twins and getting a big win against the twins this past year and that catapulted you guys into your second win and you face the Twins Yankees to end your season back to back. And after coming off that Twins win, you know, that's the A's that everybody's kind of used to. Like makes playing spoiler, shock in the world, four or five wins. Yeah. But you are right, Paul. You have had lat uh, two years ago, you lost a home run derby. Last year, you only lost to the Orioles by I think a combined three runs in two games. Yeah. So like everything that you guys are doing, you you have the tools to be successful. You have Evan Evan now on your team as kind of a a, a bona fide pitcher. Um, he's yeah. still trying to make that jump into the ace status, but he's definitely going to eat some innings for you all. But what's it going to take for the A's to take that next step, or is it just everybody firing on all cylinders at the same time? Yeah, I, mean, I think that's the big thing. Everybody firing. I mean, I wouldn't say Steve's been playing well. Uh, he's yeah. been hitting well. Otherwise, I haven't hit well enough. Uh, we need. Some, but you know, whether it's Vorbeck or I mean, Evan actually hit really well last year. Um, in the in the at bats that he had, you know, like per, yeah, I don't know how you would say that per at bat, yeah, he had a lot of home runs. And so, we just need a little bit more offense and we just need a little bit more, a little bit more yeah. offense, a little bit more pitching, a little bit more defense, and we're there. So, well, um, we will. We'll definitely get to talking about the defense later, as many people can probably guess. But yes, athletics, always willing to shock the world. Uh, when you have Alex Heck as your captain, uh, you're going to have you're going to have that heart behind the A's. And it's always one of the more fun franchises to play against and to watch play as well. So we'll get back to the athletics in just a moment. Let's move over to Chad and the Rockies. Chad, obviously, you've only been a part of the Rockies for three seasons. You obviously yep. know, you know, you've been in, inducted into the league through Brian Kenny. And now everybody obviously just loves to be around you and your family. And we're so glad you can share a Memorial Day weekend with us. Um, it's been a pleasure to have you. You were a fantastic rookie for the Rockies on the mound. Uh, you went three and three in your first year, which is nothing to snuff about getting three wins on the mound as a rookie pitcher. Um, really amazing. You were recognized nationally on the all rookie teams in 2021. And then you uh, kind of took a big, big back step. In a little sophomore slump, <laughs> a big sophomore slump, um, going one in seven and tying the record for most losses in a single season in the franchise <laughs> era. And not great, I know, <laughs> not, not, not great, but overall, the Rockies went two and eight last year. I mean, it wasn't you weren't getting wins because also the offense wasn't producing on all cylinders, like we said, with the <clears> A's. <throat> A's going two and eight this year, and the Rockies two and eight last year. But then a complete 180 for the Rockies uh, in season uh, 21 this past year. You went four and two on the mound. We'll get to your pitching stats in a little bit. But the Rockies as a team, what was that switchover for you guys? Or what was the switchover for you personally to kind of get over the hump? Finally, you have a winning record now under your belt for uh, for your your stats and the pitching <laughs> and you're we're going to talk about this more in a second but you were an all-star too starting in the all-star game for yourself so talk about what it meant for the Rockies to make that switch over and yourself on the mound yeah no season 21 was awesome that was a blast for the Rockies for everybody um you know I think uh one of it I think was you know we got two new guys in season 20 we got Adam North and Jason Yep. Uh, we lost Grant because of COVID, you know, so the team really was just a lot different than it was the year prior. Uh, yes. uh, so, so having that extra year now with the same guys, we got Grant back. Um, who I think, did he win the comeback, comeback player of the year? He did. Yeah. He won comeback player of the year. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, having him out there and just chatting with him on the side in between games, I mean, that's a hundred percent was missing the prior year. Um, and, you know, I think, uh, First year, the radar gun, not having that, I think, helped me a little bit. And then uh, <laughs> the first year with the radar gun definitely uh, was in my head quite a bit. Yeah. Quite a bit. So, uh, 
No, I think just, um, you know, I think Blake after the first season was like, dude, just stick with the knuckleball. Like you, you, yeah. you can figure that out. Don't try to do anything else. Just literally throw that every single pitch. And, and this last year, I think I threw almost a hundred percent knuckleballs. So, yeah. uh, yeah, no, he, he, uh, led me the right way on that one for sure. You could tell there was something more lively and different about your knuckleball this year. And for all of the players that you know, had to face your knuckleball, something was different and you kept it within that 55 range almost perfectly. It was almost seamless. Like Jimmy has a lot of trouble with the strike or with the, um, the speed gun, but I feel like yourself, like you've really kind of mastered that 55. Has there been practicing in the off season or is it just, you know, when you, when you get to the blur, it's just, you, it, you just go with it. You know, it's actually funny. Um, the prior uh, in, in between my first year, and my second year, I was practicing the basement a little bit. I don't think I had the right distance, but this past year I got the right distance down. And then our neighbors, Nick and Nate, they're uh, I think 11 and nine. They came over. I threw some live BP to them about a week or two beforehand. Uh, and honestly, like having the right distance, that that totally changed a lot of things. But the speed, I, I just I think I just got, you know, just locked in with the right speed and um, and was just trying to hover right there. And, it, you know, I danced a little bit more in between that 50 and 55. Uh -huh. So, yeah, no, it was. Uh, yeah, I, I figured something out last year. I don't know. Yeah. Hopefully we can keep that going. Well, the Rockies, obviously, under your tenure, you've had two years at six and four, one year at two and eight. And it actually puts you in your career at a losing record with the Rockies at 14 and 16. So hopefully, if you continue down the trajectory you're going, that you'll, you'll finally get to that 500 in your career as a team. I know the Rockies don't stay down for long. I mean, the lowest they ever had was two, obviously. And after that, six has been their lowest amount of wins they've ever had always been in the playoffs except for last year. So if the Rockies can continue on that trajectory, I, I feel like you're going to be right back there again, obviously winning your first playoff game on the mound um, was a big win against the Astros to eliminate them in the wild card game. And then you just ran into the buzzsaw that is the Yankees. And, you know, we'll go back to both of you kind of ask this question to, you know, Paul Yankees Orioles, <laughs> they've been in the finals the past two years. Obviously, they're going to be the favorites one, two going into season 22. Um, shout out Taylor Swift, you know, 22 um, and Travis Kelsey, too. But, Paul, is 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 it going to be a three peat for the Yankees Orioles or who do you think is going to kind of bust through that? And if you say twins, it's kind of a cop out. So if it, let's let's talk. They, they've won in the past three years, too. Is there a team that you think can bust through that Yankees Orioles party that's been the past two years? No, I don't. Wow. Hot take. <laughs> All right. I mean, I don't and, think so. and it's funny because we've right to the I've, point. I like it. Paul. <laughs> insider knowledge. <laughs> I know the Yankees and Orioles said, you know, if this happens again next year, maybe something's got to change. And I feel like if it does happen again <laughs> as commissioner, as somebody who wants some parody in the league, I feel like there will be some type of change. So, Chad, what about you? Maybe say something different than Paul said. Who do you think is going to be the team to bust through? Oh my goodness. I mean, we were honestly a couple swings away from being <laughs> right there in the championship. I That's mean, I'm true. not trying to be biased, but I mean, yeah. <laughs> shoot, two to five loss to the Yanks in the semis. Yeah. Gosh. I mean, you know, we, we ran into Gus. He's yeah, he's tough. I mean, if he's out there, yeah, it's going to be a battle, but I think the Rockies could handle it. And yeah. Hey, don't <laughs> sell yourself short there, there, Paul. I mean, you know, the A's, they're no slouch. I mean, Come yeah, on I think now. that's that's the beauty of the past couple of years, even with a team like the Expos going 0 and 10 or the A's going 2 and 8. Paul, you said it earlier, you ha were right there to possibly be a 5 and 5 team, a 6 and 4 team in many ways. The Expos are right there. They had a game against the Twins that was 8 to 7 this past year. So yeah. if you have Jimmy Nelson that is pitching well on the mound for that team and he holds people down to five five or less runs, the Expos can make a run too. I think they're just a couple pieces away from putting some wins together and you love to see that parody in the league. While it was fun to win a championship for myself, trophies right behind me right now. Um, but if you, it's it's great to win that championship. But it's also as a commissioner, nice to see that parody and everything too. So, um, season twenty one has been 
wrapped up in a bow. The only thing left in season 21 that needs to be accomplished is we're finishing up those videos. If you've been following um, YouTube, following Twitter, you've seen that some game videos have been starting to surface, um, some cut videos, some fully uh, edited videos for everybody to look at. In a short amount of time, I'm talking four minutes to eight minutes tops. Um, these videos are cut really short and really well. So take a look at those videos. And also we need to come out with our career stats. So that'll wrap up everything for season 21. And before we head to season 22, we just recently announced the awards. And that's one of the main reasons why these two fellows are on here tonight for the podcast. We announced our SWBL awards. Our first one that we're going to talk about is with Paul, our Platinum Hands winner, the best fielder in the league, not only winning the left fielder gold glove, but our overall fielder of the year. Paul, you had you led the league in assists with 21 and you only had one error all season long, and you had 12 putouts, which for a left fielder, it's quite a bit, quite a bit of outs. Um, obviously, your pitchers are going to have a higher putout rate, but you as the left fielder had the most total chances from a left fielder. And even though you had the one error, somebody like Chris Metter, who's a perennial favorite for this award, he had no errors, but only had 12 assists and eight putouts. So clearly behind you um, in the sense of statistics, but... There's been a couple of videos that have come out, Paul, and I don't know if you've gotten to watch them or not, but there are some incredible plays watching you back and watching you dive for <laughs> balls and use your body to get all over the place. You talked about defense getting better, but honestly, you and Paul in left and right field are one of the two most dangerous fielding combinations in the league. Is that going to be kind of your bread and butter moving forward? You know, Paul, or Steve's won a couple of right field gold gloves. You've won two left field and two platinum hands, but this is your first major award since 2009, Paul. You've won many championships as a captain with the Rays. You've been you've been inducted in the Hall of Fame, first team all decade from 2013 to 2022. But Paul, this is your first major award since 2009. What did it feel to win the award? And what's it going to be like fielding wise moving forward for the A's? Yeah, it felt good, man. I didn't. I didn't even know I was in the running. To be honest with you, it felt like that's the humble. I mean, my feeling every year. I feel like I'm doing the same thing. I did. I mean, this year I felt like you're making the plays for sure. I felt like it, yeah, like the the one the one the ones that are like fringy, like I made this year. Yeah. Usually, I don't always make those type of plays, so it just kind of went my way, I think. But um, feeling's a funny thing, man. Like. You know, you said one error, and I know the error. That yeah. error cost us a game. We lost the game because I made an error. So I, you know, that was why, I mean, the Rays won three in a row yeah. because, like, all three of us, we, just, we yeah. made very few errors, gave up very few extra runs, and yeah. it just always happens. You make an error late, they're going to hit a three-run home run. That's yeah. just what it, you know. So, but, yeah, no, I mean – I felt like we were solid this year and, and Steve is great. I mean, he just, I don't, I don't know how he gets to the, the balls that he gets to, but he does. It's just like, uh, I don't know. It's 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 a pretty wild thing to watch, really. Well, and it's it's uh, funny for Steve's trajectory of a career because he started <laughs> off as a terrible fielder, just terrible. Really? <laughs> and even even Chris Metter in his early years was not the you know the amazing person that we know in the field. Like he had some errors <laughs> early too. But it's funny how he's kind of coming to his own now. Last year, Steve did have five errors, so okay. I don't know. I don't know if the gold hands got to his head in 2021 or not, um, but he definitely turned it back around. And you guys are definitely two out there that are scary. And as you know, all of those pre-rankings come out ahead of time, you know, Paul, from fielding, pitching and hitting the captains and the front office vote on who they think will, will land where. And the A's got some disrespect in a way, you know, being the <laughs> eighth best fielding team the not, seventh huh. best so does it feel good to kind of stick it to those people and next year do you think you should be ranked in the top five absolutely as a fielding team? yeah i mean that's for sure and yeah i mean that category for sure yeah well mm -hmm. you had a fantastic season in the field it was fun to watch and in a year where there was so many amazing plays from every team so many great plays that we can go back and watch it was 
really cool to see you kind of come out of the woodwork uh, again, because we all know that you're a great fielder. You've always been steady, but finally getting that recognition that I know you deserve in this league. So congratulations again to Paul, our Platinum Hands winner in 2023. All right, let's move. You're welcome. Moving on to Chad, and you are on here because you won. Uh, you won another major award. We have big, pretty much four big major awards: the Platinum Hands, the MVP, obviously your Rookie of the Year, and then you have the Cy Wiffle, the best pitcher in the league. There have been graphics that have come out where there are only three or four teams in the entire field of play that have a Cy Young. Cy Wiffle player on it. Um, there's only three or four. And I think you have now added congratulations as the Rockies now have their first one. Brett did um, have Cy Wiffles. I think one was with the Rockies, but it's, it's nice that now you currently have another Cy Wiffle. Chad, you went four and two on the mound. You were top three in ERA. You were top three in uh, wins. You were top three in strikeouts. I mean, you had it all working for you. Top three in batting average against. I mean, everything was right there for you. You already talked about how it felt different for you this year. But what did it mean for you to win that award after you had a great already Saturday, uh, Sunday because you won the All-Star Game MVP by walking off the Home Run <laughs> Derby by yourself putting the team on your back and winning the home run derby for your team. And then you capped it off the next day. And I will tell you, I personally was, we were one, two all year long in Cy Wiffle. And it came down to who was pitching on Monday and you pitched and got the win and you took it over. And so talk about kind of what it meant to win that award. It's a major award. All-Star game was fun, but talk about what it meant to win Cy Wiffle for yourself. Yeah, big, huge honor. I mean, watching the league for a few years before I even got in the league, yeah, it was uh, it was a really fun thing. And then especially, you know, uh, I was one, two with you. That's uh, definitely an honor. I mean, you're no slouch yourself uh, in, the, in, in the wiffle ball uh, world. So, no, it was awesome. It was such a blast that weekend. Uh, uh, it's a marathon for sure, but uh, – yeah, and Saturday night, golly, that was that was a blast. Um, thank you for not having me uh, have to run. Uh, I loved how I love the All Star game for that reason alone. Um, yeah, no, it, it, it's the that's why it's the best weekend of the year. It, it, you never know what the heck's going to happen. Uh, no, you know, tequila shots were flowing. It was a blast. <laughs> well, and you also had a save on the weekend too, and <laughs> yeah. to have. To, to add that to your repertoire and also to to have an ERA that is under five in this league is stupendous. You know, there's there's been one off years where a Kyle Cornell had an under three ERA one year. It's still a record. He didn't pitch as many innings as you did um, this past year, but you have consistently been pitching 27, 29 and a half innings. You've been the ace. You've been putting in those innings. You've been an eating innings eater. But this is the first year where kind of all came together. Your offense was behind you. Obviously, you could probably say you're not, you can't win the side wiffle without the offense that you have, um, without your teams kind of stepping up. But um, it was a great year for the Rockies and a great year to cap it off in the awards. I know probably all the Rockies will say they wanted the trophy. Uh, they wanted to hoist the league trophy a little more, but I think all of them were super happy. What, were they excited in the text thread? Did, they, did anybody chat with you? Anybody oh, yeah. yeah. Our Rocky Balboa chat group uh, <laughs> was going pretty crazy. Uh, no, it was fun. Uh, and like you said, you're exactly right. I mean, gosh, the, I think, you know, a year before, we, we didn't really hit well. The, the new guys were trying to figure it all out. And this year, golly, I mean, every one of them was hitting every game. It was, it's nice when you got eight, nine runs in an inning or two to then just go out there and just try to hit the hit the 10, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, you're exactly right. Well, three Rockies were all stars in season 21. It'll be interesting to see what happens in season 22 for both of you, whether it's the fielding for Paul. And I know Paul wants to improve on the offensive side. And I know Chad would like to continue <laughs> to climb his numbers in season 22. Let's chat. I know it's way too early to talk about season 22, but we're going to do some way too early predictions. And we're going to talk a little bit first about uh, we have winter meeting coming up, fellas. And I know you've seen this around kind of floating around. 
We're not only just doing winter meeting, but we're all also doing a poker night for the SWBL. We're very excited to kind of host a, an off-season event for anybody. It'll be on December 29th. If you're interested, uh, make sure you reach out to me. I can get you the link to register and we'll have some, you can win some money uh, with poker, win some prizes, some SWBL stuff as well. We'll have some mini games going on and also some food and drink for everybody that attends too. So if you can make it, to those that are listening or those that are watching on YouTube, uh, join us for the Season 22 Winter Meeting and SWBL Poker Night on December 29th. All right, Season 22, guys. It is going to be Memorial Day, obviously, again. We're going to be, we've had great weather, knock on wood. We're going to hopefully continue that trajectory in May. And let's talk about your teams first. What is, Paul, the ceiling for the athletics and the floor for the athletics coming up in season 22 in your mind, knowing all the other teams, there's been some free agency talk so far. There's probably not going to be a lot of changes. Let's be honest with teams, unless there's going to be some rookie that gets signed. But what do you think is the ceiling and floor for the athletics in season 22? Man, that's the. Why is range? Think, out of, are you the widest range think out of the whole the league? A's have a ceiling or a floor, unfortunately. <laughs> I, I really don't. I couldn't, I can't answer that question because if you said, Hey, you, you won this year, I'd say that's possible. You say, Hey, <laughs> you, we won't lose 10. If you say, Hey, you lost nine. It's like, it's possible. I yeah. mean, I'm not going to say it's not possible, yeah. but you, uh, it's a, you may it's have a the weird widest thing. range. Yeah. Yeah. It's a weird thing, man. I, it's just, it's fun to compete. It's fun to be in competitive games and, um well I feel like we've done that I feel like yeah. uh we if we do it just a little more we will we'll be there is that the mindset and the morale from the athletics in the clubhouse the whole time too as long as we're yeah. staying competitive I mean, we're in it. every yeah every every year every game I think everybody actually I mean we really believe we could win yeah. it you know it's just it hasn't gone that way yeah um but it could easily go that way yeah, just absolutely just has to go that way. So yeah. All right, Chad, same question. You you guys finished fourth place last year overall. Uh you were pre-ranked, I believe, in the sixth hole last year, um, from what the pundits um said about you. But what what is your what is your thoughts? What's your ceiling and floor for the Rockies in season 22? I mean, shoot. Got everybody coming back. I could see an eight and two season easily. I mean, if everything's clicking, beers are flowing, beautiful <laughs> weather, you know, I, yeah, I see eight and two easily. Yeah. But then to Paul's point, if the beers are flowing, then, <laughs> you know, maybe it can be a two and eight. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, uh, it really all depends, like like Paul said. But um, no, I, I I'm definitely optimistic. I'm that kind of guy. But uh, I could see an eight and two season for sure out of the round. Right. I'm gonna make you give me a floor number, J uh, Chad. What's the place? Is seventh place, sixth place? What's your floor? All right, I want to know what your floor okay. is. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, we got eight teams. Eight, nine teams. Nine teams. I want to spark some floor. controversy with what you say here. I mean, I don't see us finishing any lower than like sixth. All right, maybe. love it. All right, confidence still good, good, but also giving yourself I mean, some room to not so make who's, playoffs. Who's All right. seven and eight then, Chad? <laughs> who's seven and nine, Chad? You want to spark some <laughs> more <laughs> Well, I mean, if you look at last year, I mean, <laughs> uh, Expos will probably be there in the shanty town. <laughs> All uh, right. God, this is going to get me in trouble, man. Uh, <laughs> Honestly, not, Astro, teams. I can see the Astros. I they, you know, I can oh. see them maybe kind of slipping a little bit this year. They had a little lid. I I could tell something was going on. <laughs> um, and then, golly, yeah, you know what, Paul? Screw the Marlins. They're going to be behind us. Yeah. yeah. All right. There there you go. Go. <laughs> All right. So you know. It, we, we haven't talked too much about some of the, the offseason signings to you, but you mentioned the Astros. They lose David Olderman to the White Sox. Um, it's kind of a, a big one right there. So uh, Astros losing their, their number two pitcher from last year. Uh, they still have plenty of pitching depth and some, some options that they can go with. But 
Uh, going to the White Sox, bolster that pitching rotation as well. So it should be an interesting year for both those teams too. Yeah. All right. Let's one more season 22 question. If you guys had your teams that you currently have, you don't have to replace anybody on your roster, but who's a player that you think would fit in and add to your team that you want to make a push to, whether it's in the future, would love to play with this person, and also just might add some camaraderie and also make you that much more competitive in making that next step. You don't have to pitch to them right now, but just somebody that you think would fit in, add to camaraderie, but also help you competitively too. Paul, start with you, the A's. Or you can think about it if you want to for a second, but there's a lot of good options here. I know that this league is all about friends and family. I know, Paul, you've been around since 2008. So, you know, plenty of people, all these, all these teams are very close to you. You've played with many of these other players on here, um, on these teams. So Paul, who's a player that you would add to your team right now that would fit in? Mm, man, that's a great question. So I want to answer it well. I'm all really right. trying to think about that. Yeah. Oh, and I know then, it. I know it. Okay. All right. I go for it. it. Kevin Poley. Awesome. Kevin Poley. So why Kevin, Kevin? Poley? Kevin Poley is actually an A. He's not a Yankee. <laughs> he is an A, dude. He just, I mean, I get it, but he is an A. It fits the mold. Yeah. He, he's got that good guy mentality. He's he's the quiet assassin on the Yankees, that's for sure. He um, he has been a monster at, yeah, at the yeah, yeah. Show the past couple of years, man. And if you add him into the A's uh, on, on their lineup. And That'd be it. it and it would be tough too to see uh, who who would you play in right field. You know, Kevin and Steve are two of the better right fielders you've had in the past couple of years. So t- you, hey, if one of them can play left. I don't mind. I'll take you. Know what? Kevin can play. Hey. I'll, he can he can decide where he wants to play. It's nice to have depth, and that'll give Paul some more pitching innings, right, Paul? We need you back out there with your slider. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what. Every year you get a little bit older. It just hurts it's, it's, a lot more. It's Not tougher. a little more. It hurts a lot. More. <laughs> Every All year. right. Chad, same question. Who would you add to the Rockies that would add to camaraderie, but also make you competitive to where you want to go to the promised land again? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, you think of the Yankees and you think of the guys on the Orioles. But who would have the belly button hole is who I'm thinking. And honestly, Mr. Ben Ware would probably be really great for the Rockies. I think he could bring quite a bit to the table and to the shanty town and just slide him over just a little bit further. I think he would be great. You're, talk, you're talking Ben Ware from the Astros, right? Yes. Brian, Mr. Brian Ben Ware. Yes. Sir. Nice. All right. Wow. That, that would be an awesome signing considering he's the captain of the Astros. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta start somewhere. You know? What a manager switch up that would be. Blake's like, you know what? I'm done. I'll handle <laughs> roster, but you can handle the, the in-game stuff. Brian, jump to the Rockies and bring us to the promised land again. Wouldn't that be fun to see a I manager mean, Brian, switch yeah. up like that? <laughs> yeah, Brian could just focus kind of on the fielding and then, you know, just let Ben and, and uh, Brian and, and Blake kind of take care of it. But, you know, well, I, that's probably why I don't really make a lot of decisions. They just probably <laughs> win <laughs> pitch and when i'm out when i'm in so you know i like it the camaraderie behind it brian benware has been an important part of the league the past many years and um definitely added to the league morale and bringing in people when when it's nice that he's been kind of bringing in some rookies and then the rookies develop into players that other people um can give chances to as well so um nice a nice fun uh fun addition there to the rockies it would be season 22 <laughs> We're very excited to have our 22nd season, the longest running wiffle ball league in the country um, that's been continuing on here in St. Louis, Missouri. We have just celebrated, Paul and I just were celebrating this past weekend, one of our our good buddies, Scott Poley, congratulations on his wedding to Hayden. Um, Hayden Coffee now Hayden Poley, they're on their honeymoon as we mentioned. So Scott cannot join us. Scott had one of the best seasons that we've ever seen in the SWBL, obviously being the third player in history to win the Triple Crown, um, an incredible feat, uh, actually tied Spencer Bogad in RBIs, and it was, but still, obviously, you're the top three winning the Triple Crown, and he had such an amazing season and also was third in Cy Wiffle. So talk about a season. You had Gus Gibby, who had probably the best offensive season we've ever seen from someone. 
turning it into Scott Poley, who won the Triple Crown. And congratulations to him, our MVP and our Triple Crown winner. Our Rookie of the Year, Sam Eichenlob, who is signed back for the Expos. Congratulations. And again, congratulations to Chad Young, our side wiffle, and Paul Castellano, our Platinum Hands Best Fielder in the SWBL. It's going to be exciting with these two do next year. We also have a holiday coming up. We want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. And Paul and Chad, we are going to do what something is called counter rankings. And to everybody that's listening out there, this is something that's been kind of in the wiffle world before um, our good buddy Trent Steffes of the White Sox was one of the uh, few founders of this counter ranking that this is. How it's going to work is this. We are going to do a top four. So each of you gets two top four Thanksgiving foods. Okay. Now we're going to do this backwards. So we're going to go four, three, two, one. Now, you guys can kind of be thinking about while I'm talking your top four Thanksgiving foods in your head. But here's the deal. If Chad goes first, he gets to pick number four. If Paul's number two was his number four, it's thrown out. He's got to pick something else. So your counter ranking is going to be whatever you guys decide. So only two of your options are going to happen. So, Chad, and you guys get to decide. You're going to get us kicked off here for top four Thanksgiving foods for yourself. Chad, what is the number four? favorite food for your Thanksgiving meal. So you got to kind of work your way backwards here. Yeah, yeah. No, I hear you. I got a, definitely a couple up there. So I'm going to go four would be cornbread. I'm going to go with some cornbread. Paul, do you have cornbread at your Thanksgiving? No, no. I don't either. So, oh, wow. all right. That's Chad, a you great know. idea there. Hey, you got you to gotta have a little bit of everything. Come on. Yeah. All right. Throwing in the cornbread. So cornbread was not on Paul's list. So, Paul, your number three is, is clear and easy here. So what, what you going with for number three? Yeah, I'm pretty confident this is not going to be on his. <laughs> but it's uh, – I don't know what my mom does with this. But it's like a cheesy – rice and broccoli thing green, I know green the rice broccoli, you're like, yeah, but dude, green it's rice awesome. it's so uh, good we have green rice at ours too it's delicious is that what it's called green rice yeah broccoli you got is it like the Vel the velveta sauce cheese and stuff and the maybe. cream of mushroom and, yeah, yeah. Maybe oh, yeah. So. good stuff That's all right huh. chad okay. have you ever had green rice before i have not Wow, wow. this, we is, got, we this got. is hot takes. Hot takes here from Paul and Chad, adding in some new things for each other. All right, Chad, the number two. So this is people out there in the Thanksgiving world are looking at you guys like, what are these guys doing? Because this is your top four that you're collectively coming up with. And you haven't included a lot of really famous Thanksgiving foods. So Chad, what is number two on your list? I mean, goodness, you got to go. You got to go stuffing. Um, stuffing is gonna be there. Like some do good you, dressing. Yeah. So do you stuff the bird or is it dressing in the oven? What do you do, Chad? Oh well, you do both because you know you gotta have a little bit of everything, but definitely the stuff that's inside. Mm, yeah. Okay. That's I'm more, of a, I, I, I'm more of a dressing guy. But uh, all right, number two, the stuffing dressing combo. We'll do a slash on there. So Paul, where would you where would have you had stuffing or dressing on your list, Paul? I'm not a stuffing guy. Wow. Man. I'm not a stuffing guy. We could guy. go to Thanksgiving together. It's <laughs> no, you cannot. Oh man. All right. And Paul, what is the number one Thanksgiving food in your mind? For me, it's like I think it's just called sweet potato casserole with the marshmallows on top. Yeah. Man, I only have that once a year. So damn good. All right. Sweet potato casserole, best. number one. Dressing and stuffing, number two. We have green rice at number three and cornbread at number four. Drop the top four in our comments on Twitter. See if you are, think these guys are crazy for their top four list. What is your top four <laughs> list for Thanksgiving foods? I want to wish Paul and Chad a happy Thanksgiving and everybody listening out there, all your families. We are so thankful for this league and all of our family and friends that get to come out on Memorial Day. And we get to talk about it here in November, um, still talking about season 21 uh, on November 21st, mind you, is when this podcast was recorded. And it's so I'm so thankful for both of you. So thankful for all of your teammates, your captains, and all the captains and players in our league for what you guys bring to the table to make this league so great. I know a lot of people say that uh, the league wouldn't run without me and everything I do for the league, but I do it for all of you guys. And I'm so thankful that everybody loves to stick around and be here Paul, you've been here since 2008. 
So I'm so thankful for you and your family and thankful for Ashley for continuing to let us to let you come <laughs> out. And I will end with this. Um, both of you have beautiful families. Um, Chad, one of my favorite pictures from season 21 is that picture of you laying in the grass like this. Uh, it's, it's just a heartwarming picture and one that I know I posted on, I think on Father's Day, I posted as well. Um, one of my favorite pictures. And then obviously I'm sure Chad and Paul, you'd both agree, but one of my favorite moments of season 21 was when Bo threw Paul home run <laughs> derby. Um, Bo was up really late. One of the games went really long, but you still let him throw that BP to you. And it was one of the more heartwarming moments. Reason why we do the things we do in this league is for our families and our friends and to see our families and friends come together each and every year. So around your tables, um, not just Paul and Chad, but everybody listening around your tables tonight, uh, tomorrow, by the time people listen to this, it'll be tomorrow because they'll listen to it Wednesday. So it'll be tomorrow. Um, we, we're thankful for everybody and make sure you thank everybody for, for letting us play this child's game every Memorial Day around <laughs> your family's table. Paul, any last words for the people? Hmm. Anything to shock the world? <laughs> Man, you're putting me on the spot here. I want to give you something good. I really yeah. want to give you something good. It can be something simple. Just peace out. No, no. The A's will shock the world. That's right. This year. This is the I'm year. excited. I'm excited. You never know what, what's going to hold for the league. And it all stems from the division draw. It really does. Like, what's your division going to yeah. look like? And we'll find that out in February when we, when we get back. Chad, any last words for everybody out there? Yeah, just thanks, Kamish. Uh, appreciate everything. Uh, it's an honor. And can't wait till next year. Let's go Rockies. All right. For Paul Castellano and Chad Young, our Platinum Hands winner and our Cy Wiffle from 2023, I'm Sam Skibby. Thanks for listening to the SWBL podcast. We'll see you next time for the next SWB podcast. I assume Brian Ben will be back on your airwaves. See you next time, and we'll see you for hopefully winter meeting and poker night on December 29th. See ya.